This is Graham from .easy. We're coming to you with another video. For this one, we're going to be touching upon how to add add-on domains. We did do a video about this before. We're just updating this video to reflect the new changes to member zone, which many of you have seen. We wanted to make sure that there's no confusion there at all and how to get everything done still through the new system. So the first thing you want to do whenever kind of adding an add-on domain, to make sure you definitely have a backup of everything. And the first account we'd suggest to go into would actually be the account that you're going to be adding everything onto, the new server. The reason why is because it's best to find some information of where you're going to be moving everything to before actually making the changes. So the first thing we want to do is we're going to go into the account. In this case, we're going to be going into a master account, which some of you may not have set up yet. Master account just is something we can use to actually access both accounts at once. So if you haven't set one up yet and you have more than one domain, it's a good idea to set one up to use them both. Otherwise, you can easily sign into your master account by itself. If you do go into a master account, you'll see this option here. We can select which of the accounts we're going to. So we need to go into the master account at this point, which is sampledomain.net, for our example. So we click on this, it'll come up to the screen. If you didn't use the master account and signed in directly to the account, you'll be at the same screen here as well. You just won't see that previous screen we saw. So from this screen, what we want to do is we want to go down to where it says view DNS info. Now in here, you're going to see a set of primary servers and a set of secondary servers and primary servers. These ones are for the primary domain and for add-on domains. So we need to grab the ones for the actual add-on domains. This is one we're going to need later on, and it's best to just grab this now so it's something you have and you don't need to worry about it. So as you can see here, I'm opening up a notepad just to quickly have it written down there. So I can quickly copy and paste it later. I don't need to come back here. So once we've done that, we can actually sign out of this one. We don't need to worry about it. Or you can, if you've got them both configured in the actual domain manager as we do, the master account, you can go to the second account so far, so sweet, we're already there. So what you want to do before you make further changes here is you want to make sure you've actually backed up all of the website content. So for the website, we'd suggest to get an FTP program just like this one and connect up to your server. You want to make sure you make a copy of everything inside the public underscore HTML folder. You can either drag this and drop this across and it'll download everything or you can open it up and grab any specific files you want out of it and use them that way. If you have a database or anything set up on the server, you may need to actually go into your cPanel, your access site admin panel, to download it from there, the same place you created it. If you're not sure how to back up the database or the files or have any trouble with it, give our support a ring. You can reach us by phone, live chat, or email support, whatever is more convenient for you. We'll help you set that all up. Once you've got everything backed up, and you know you do because we are going to be moving everything to the new server, you want to make sure you go into the new account you're going to be adding it to. In this case, we've got our so far so sweet selected from our master account. If you don't have the master account, again, make sure you've signed into this one and you signed out of the other one from before. We need to start off by changing the DNS servers. The way we can do that is by going into change name servers here. You can see it's just set up as a default servers. So we want to go ahead and get those from the previous ones that we copied down. If you wrote it down, you can just type it in. Otherwise, we're just going to be copying them in here. And because they're always sequentially, you can just copy and paste the same one twice and then change the number, increase it by one. But once you've got those two in there, you just want to click on where it says apply changes. We're going to wait for it to save this. This can take a little bit here sometimes, depending on your connection. It has to update the information not only to our system, but to update it to the Whois database and also to propagate these changes online so other people can actually view them once their internet providers have propagated them as well. So we're just going to give it a sec here, wait for it to finish. It'll come up with a little successful message letting us know it's completed once it's gone through. And there we go. As you can see, it's shown it's successfully done. Once you've gotten that here, that's actually the only change we need to make out of this. So you can either sign out of this one if, again, you don't have a master account set up and sign into the main account. For those of you with the master accounts, you can just, again, click up here and go to the main account. Once we've got the main account back up here, we need to go into the access site admin panel under the hosting plan option here. And this will open up your C panel, your control panel. Once you've got the control panel up here, all we need to do is go down to the add-on domain section. You'll find this under the domain heading. If your cPanel looks a little different from ours, that's okay. They do have different themes depending on what server you're on. So you may or may not see this white background. You may have just the regular one, which is yellow and white. The actual options do have the same names though and same headings. So you just again want to look for where it says domains and then go to where it says add-on domains. Once you've got this created here, it's going to ask you what the new domain name is. So we're just going to type it in. So, so far, so sweet. 
Facebook.com. It's going to ask you for a username and a password. If you just click anywhere else on the screen, it'll actually fill them in, just like you saw it do for me. In this case, you can either create a brand new username for it, an FTP one. This will allow you to go into that one, specifically the folder it's creating, which is so far so sweet.com. So that you can manage all the accounts there. You can also just use the main FTP account information, the one for in this case our sample domain.net, but for your main account as well, as it has access to absolutely everything on the server because it's considered the master account for the server. The only thing you do need to make sure you put in here is a password. So we're just gonna go ahead and type that in. And then once you've got that here, you wanna click on where it says add domain. Then gonna go through the process of adding this to the server for you. you. Just need to wait a second for it to do so. And once you can see it's here, it's known that it's now set up properly. You get the green confirmation that it's set up the add-on domain and it's set up the extra FTP user. And it says if you need to manage the files right away, you can go into the file manager. Just kind of having an information page there to let you know that you do need to make sure to back up all the files and restore them to the new server. So once you've gotten to the screen here, you can actually just click go back. Everything is now set up on the server. You can confirm this by it does show at the bottom, the add-on domains are showing there. You can also go to where it says home at the top to take you back to the main screen. And from here, you'll be able to add anything like email accounts. So you can go under email to where it says email accounts. And you can go ahead and create email accounts in here. You'll be able to actually set them up under the domain as you can see it now shows up there. So do make sure to recreate any email accounts you plan to use as well. And then if you need to set up any different files, like say you just set up an add-on domain and you want to say install WordPress, you can go down to your soft hack list or you can just go to the default one right here. You can go under software to set to soft hack list as well. Either way it works. We're just going to install WordPress quickly. So if we go into soft hack list, you select WordPress, you can go to the install option. If you go to where it says choose domain, you'll see now you have the option of setting up the extra domain. So this way you can easily register new accounts as just something similar to like a domain only account. And then once you've added them on here, you get full access to set up WordPress or anything else on the server. So they are completely independent of each other, which is good. Now, one thing to keep in mind is because there is the DNS change earlier as well, it may take time to actually propagate the changes and reflect them online. So just again, do keep that in mind if you don't see it take over right away but this does give you time as well to make sure everything migrates across properly in terms of files and everything and that you do have it set up and working first of all so if you do need to go ahead and connect an ftp up you can just go ahead and ftp back up to the server you're just basically moving everything within the public underscore html folder that you put up there and move it back onto the new server itself if you have any trouble with the restoration of the files the database or anything again contact our support for help we'll be able to help provide you with steps on how to do this and make sure it goes across properly if you run into any weird problems with the setup again do contact our support as well we'll be able to help you with this if you have any questions or concerns or anything else comes up definitely leave us any feedback in the comment section you can also reach us on our twitter page as well as on our facebook and you can reach us through our support as well if you have any questions thank you for watching